So I brought in this texture fill, right? And one easy way to use a texture fill is to simply take the opacity down and see how it affects your image. What I like about that is it adds those colors to everything, but what I don't like about it is the hard edges that are still in the texture fill. Some texture fills don't have any hard edges, right? This is the beauty of digital art. The computer is very good at taking focus away. So how can I take focus away from this so I don't have these crisp edges? What I'm going to do first is right click on the image in PhotoP and rasterize it because it came in as a smart object. This is after I've sized it, right? So I've rasterized it. Now these pixels are in the program. And I want to cut down on the contrast of these edges. I'm not going to use image adjustments. Instead, I'm going to use the only filter we'll use in this class reliably. And that is filter blur Gaussian blur. So filter blur Gaussian blur, once it comes up, <laughs> will allow me to blur the edges of pixels like they're out of focus. So let me try that again. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Where is the tool? Uh-oh. Why is it not giving me the tool? Oh, I need to select the layer probably. It got deselected. Let me try it again. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So it knows what it's applying it to. There we go. So you get the tool. And then just like when you are choosing for feathering a selection, you're going to choose the radius. So a 0.1 pixel radius is not going to soften it much. But a 10 pixel radius will soften it a lot. Right? So it's basically making the image out of focus. And you can decide how much is appropriate if you're worried about those edges. Right? Now I can just take the opacity down and it looks like this kind of pinkish mist is falling over my landscape. The other thing I can do is I can move that layer down through my layers and have it affect different layers differently. So now the foreground's really clear. Now the middle ground and foreground are really clear. On and on and on until maybe I just use it on the back horizon. And you see how helpful that is. My way of doing that, and this can be helpful, like syncing it through your layers, but you can also just use a soft eraser. So I'll use my eraser really large, really soft edge, 0%. I mean really large, like a thousand pixels. And I'm going to start not at 100% opacity because I've already softened the edges. I'm going to start at like 50% opacity. And I'll just kind of blow this texture away from the foreground. And then maybe push it across the middle ground a little bit. So that it's really present in the background. And then maybe get rid of it a little bit more in this immediate foreground. And just like that, I've built some visual distance between my foreground, middle ground, background that wasn't there before. Because the atmosphere is going to get heavier and heavier as we see it in the distance. All right. Now, because this is a fill that's at a low opacity on top of everything, I can also do a few things. I can duplicate it and double it up and have even more control like of what I erase and what I, I leave. And I can set them at different opacities, these different layers. I can also adjust the image adjustments, the levels, and I can darken that texture fill. Make it like a stormier landscape or brighten it, a sunnier landscape. All in a much more believable way 
than if I just did a direct levels change to the whole image. So this just gives you a lot of control. I think I want it a little bit brighter. Okay, then I can do color balance and I can change the color temperature of it. A lot of texture fills don't have any color, they're just in grayscale, but then you can use hue saturation to add color to them. So I can push them in different ways, in the midtones, in the shadows, and it's not going to hurt anything. I don't have to worry about that. It's just giving kind of more an emotional tone. Do I want it warmer or cooler? What? How do I want the colors to have focal points? I think I need more red, so I'm going to put some more red in the shadows. A little bit more red, and I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, so this was before. Come on. And now with levels, with color balance, you know, really kind of sinking it in. Other ways I can improve this. You want to think, uh, wherever I put my creature, is there ground for it to stand on, right? And are the edges cleanly, cleanly set? So like around the french fries, you see the little green that's there? I'm going to go ahead and combine these two layers. Select them both and then say layer merge layers. And it will go into one layer. That allows me to use my magic wand to uncheck contiguous because I'm going to select empty space. Select all the empty space around them with that three pixel feather. And then bite away at them. And then I'll do it again. So command D, deselect. Use the magic wand. Let's try a five pixel feather this time. Select the empty space, bite away at those. Then there's that little bit of green right there. I can use dodge and burn, which I haven't used before on assignment one. And I can use a large brush, very soft edged with my tablet at an exposure of always less than 30. And I'll usually do less than 20 because it's a really powerful tool. Big brush, soft edged. Gonna give a little bit more dimension to these foreground french fries by darkening some of their shadows. That's what burn does. So if I go in my history to before, I burned, looked like that. Now after I burn, looks like this, right? Helps make them more distinct. And then I can use dodge. And this is just all to improve your, your assignment one, your landscape. Same thing, large brush, soft size, only on the midtones and I'm going to brighten them up. What's great about being able to do this on individual layers is it's not going to impact the layers behind them, right? Or the layers in front. I can just focus on my foreground french fries. And let's see what the dodging, if that made an impact. From there to there. Yeah, so all that helps. I can dodge and burn the duck. So if I want more light to hit the top of the duck, I can dodge that and I can burn underneath it. This is all going to help us understand how to manipulate the lighting for our creature and how to blend the two together. I can even dodge and burn on my texture fills 
where I want them to be a little bit deeper, I can burn them. Or a little bit brighter, I can dodge them. Okay, now, let me see. The last thing I want to do is erase a little bit more of the texture fill in the foreground here. Now that I've corrected my french fries a bit. And then I want to soften the edge on those foreground boulders. So I'm using a 5 pixel feather. And now I'm going to delete, 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 delete. Soften it up. Maybe I even need to go in with a full opacity soft edged eraser. Because this was all pretty hurried when I first turned in the assignment. But you never want to view it more than 200%. There we go. And kind of create my own feather size. You can show the french fry kind of coming around it a little bit. And then there's all these greens in my french fries that I don't like. So I'm going to select those greens with magic wand and contiguous turned off. It's going to select a lot of that green with maybe too much pixel feather. So I'm going to take the feather down only one pixel and do it again. Command D to deselect. Select those greens. And now I'm just going to use burn. And instead of the burn tool, I'll start with the burn tool. I'm going to make it a lot smaller and targeted just to get those green. So here I'm using the magic wand selection as a stencil, as a mask. Oh, I'm dodging and I want to be burning. There we go. Darken those. There's another one over here. Darken that. And then I can use the sponge tool to take that color away, to desaturate the green. Just like Dodge and Burn, I want a soft brush. Take that green away. And then I can go in and get around them a little bit so that they're less distracting. I can even softly erase them. Just fine tuning. All of you have comments on your assignment one landscape. That might help you see what you can improve, but of course use your own judgment as well. Remember, if you're using a tablet, click on that pressure sensitivity tab up there so that you can be a lot more direct with your corrections. Okay. Anything else I want to do? Maybe I'll just erase a little bit more of this texture. The texture fill from my middle ground. Now that those french fries are really standing up on their own. Yeah. It's working. Might even push this one. No, I want a little bit of it. Okay. Good. So once you've improved your landscape and you've added some texture fills and you've played with adjustments, all of that, 